Chilling, who was a Queen's Medicine graduate of 1940. Dr. Chilling was an distinguished physician, teacher, researcher, and administrator, admired by his family, colleagues, and the trusted community. I would like to thank his daughter, Diane Kelly, for joining us uh, this evening. I would also like to thank the generosity of the Four Points Hotel Kingston, Medical House, and everyone else, um, there are a lot of you, who helped make this event come to fruition. Last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank the Department of Family Medicine here at Queen's, who transformed this event from possibility to reality. All right, I'm not supposed to read about uh, Dr. Pat He doesn't really need an introduction, and I'll speak from the heart. Uh, now, Patch, he likes to be called, is, is the founder of the Gesundheit Institute. Now, this uh, institute is involved in global outreach, education, and building projects, including the teaching center and clinic, and uh, also a hospital, a free hospital, based on compassion and service.
Twenty adults, three of us physicians and our children moved into a large six-bedroom house and said we were a hospital. Open 24 hours a day, seven days a week for all manner of medical problems from birth to death. We ran this pilot for 12 years. During this time, we had 500 to 1,000 people in our home each month with five to 50 overnight guests a night. I'm sure you can do the math. Hmm, six-bedroom house, 20 adults and their children living there, five to 50 overnight guests a night. Let's say that those guests Whatever their medical problems were, were needy and lonely and lonely and lonely and needy. Dangerous, my closest classmate was murdered by one of our patients. We let everyone in our home. The one rule was no physical violence. Never in our history, 39 years, have we charged money for any medical care that we've done. And it wasn't that we were free for poor people. We wanted to eliminate the idea of debt in the medical interaction. We never wanted anyone to think they owed something. We wanted them to be excited that they belonged to something called community. And that community was a nest that cared for them. So in that same flavor, we never had anything to do with private or government insurance. I've never seen an insurance form. They control the way practices given in the United States, and we are out of control. If universal coverage or single payer pass in the U.S., we would not accept it if it had any interest in controlling anything that we did. Probably the most radical thing we've done as far as the inability we've had to get funding is that we're the only medical group in the U.S. refusing to carry malpractice insurance. When you carry malpractice insurance, you're telling your patients, I'm afraid of you and I don't trust you. You live your professional career in fear and mistrust. Fear and mistrust in all human interactions is always horrible. We need the right to make a mistake. Medicine is not about curing, it is about caring. The sooner one gains a humility when they practice medicine and realize how little they actually are really going to be able to cure, the better they will be. What did I want with my patients? And I, I knew that I had to give time I knew that it was really important to develop a relationship. And so from the very beginning, my first interview with a adult patient is four hours long. It is the most intense four hours I think any of them ever had. I ask every question sensitive to life. If I see any squiggly lines, I ask question number two. I don't think it was that people were able to hide themselves from me. I insisted that I visited their home, and when I made a house call, I opened every drawer, went in every closet, God helped your privacy. I apologize, you asked me to be your doctor. In the four-hour interviews that I've done for now, really, 42 years, I found less than 3% of our population has self-esteem. I love me. I found less than 5% with a day-to-day -day vitality for life. I love life. I love life. And they weren't coming for those problems. And I'm not talking about the patients who came with mental illness. Of the 15,000 people who came to our home in those 12 years, 3,000 had profound mental health histories, and we never disliked the patient enough to give them psychiatric medication. <laughs> And they were probably our most outrageous experiments were in dealing with, with uh, unusual behavior. We've been the only hospital in the country to integrate all of the healing arts. It was against the law when we started. And yet, from the very beginning, we welcomed acupuncture, homeopathy, naturopathy, chiropractic, Ayurvedic, and herbal medicine, body work, faith healing, and some really strange <laughs> We let any practitioner come and work with us as long as they were free and let us watch. 